Hello, this is Chris McVeigh with KDE Direct. Today we're going to be showing you how to do a bearing and shaft replacement in the KDE Direct XF Series multi-rotor motors. For reference today, we will be using the KDE Direct 7215, 5215, and 4012 motors. These three motors will go over the different shaft types and how to replace them. For the bearing replacement, we will reference the 7215 motor. The bearing replacement technique is the same in all KDE Direct multi-rotor motors. The only difference is the size of the bearing. You will need several pieces of equipment from around your shop to complete this process. An arbor press, Loctite 263 and 648, metric wrenches, sockets according to bearing size, and some type of dowel or bolt to help press the bearings out per bearing size. You can purchase the correct replacement motor shafts and bearing kits at our website at kdedirect.com. You will find the replacement parts for our XF multi-rotor motors under Multi-Rotor SUAS Replacement Kits. While at our website, you can also download all of our drawings that help reference each of our XF series motors. The motor drawings are on each individual XF series motors webpage. The drawing will be titled Design, Geometry, Dimension, Specification Sheet. We ask that you download and print the drawing per the XF motor you plan on replacing the motor shafts in. This drawing will have specific details for each motor shaft's specific heights. Now we will take an XF series motor apart and replace the bearings. This technique is the same throughout our entire line of KDE XF series motors. The only difference is the tool size you will use to push the bearings in and out. Here we have a KDE Direct 7215-135 motor that we'll be using to reference our bearing replacement. We also have a KDE Direct bearing replacement kit to go along. The first step is to take the hardware off the bottom of the motor. The 7215 and 5215 motors will have a large button head cap screw and set screws holding the lock collar on. Our other XF motors from 4014 down will have two set screws holding the collar secure. Use the proper metric wrench to remove the hardware. Make note of the bottom of the retaining collar. This lip of, on the collar always goes towards the bearing. With the retaining collar removed, pull the motor apart. This may take some force to overcome the magnets. Now that the motor bell is removed, set it aside to later replace the shaft. Find a dowel or a bolt that can reach down through the upper bearing and make contact at an angle to push the lower bearing out. It may take changing the angle on the lower bearing in order to push it out properly. And now use your arbor press to press the bottom bearing out. Take note not to do any damage to the winding while doing this process. It may take several times of changing the angle on the bottom bearing to properly press it. With the bottom bearing pressed out, we have a much better view to press the two upper bearings out at one time. Make note, the winding will be very close to the arbor press while pressing the two upper bearings out. You should use a shop rag to help protect them. Now use the same process to press the two upper bearings out. With all of the bearings pressed out, we can inspect and clean the bearing retainers. We can now disregard the old bearings. With our new KDE bearing kit, we can now prepare to install the new bearings themselves. With our new bearings removed from package, this is where the different size sockets come into play. You will use different sockets per different motor bearing installation. The sockets you choose to use should fit into the motor bearing retainer.
they should also only push on the outside race of the bearing it's going to push in. The socket you choose to use should put no pressure on the bearing shield itself. This can do damage to the ball bearing, leading, leading to a premature failure. With the correct socket chosen, we can prep our motors to press the bearings in. You should use Loctite brand 648 for this procedure. Place an amount of Loctite 648 into each retainer. Use your finger to make sure the retainer is properly covered with 648. Take the correct socket and press each bearing into its retainer. Make sure to note the winding when pressing the bottom bearing in. Use a rag to protect the winding if necessary. Now that our KDE Direct Bearing Replacement Kit is installed, we can now move on to shaft replacement. Here we have the different motor bells we're going to be replacing shafts in, the KDE 7215, 5215, and 4012. You can purchase the replacement shafts at kdedirect.com under Multi-Rotors SUAS Replacement Kits. You will need the drawing, a replacement motor shaft, metric wrenches, a pair of calipers, Loctite 648, Loctite 263, an arbor press, and a dowel or a bolt to help press the shaft out of the motor can. You should reference and print the drawing at our website for each XF motor. The drawing provides important details about each motor shaft. This is the drawing for the 412-400 motor. Here it shows the correct shaft height that should protrude from the motor bell. The 4012-400 is 5.5 millimeters. We will be pressing the shafts out of each motor bell at this point. We need to remove the hardware on each bell that retains the shaft. Use a metric wrench to remove the hardware from each motor shaft. KDE Direct provides all new hardware in each motor shaft replacement kit. With the hardware removed, use the arbor press to press the shaft flush with the top of the motor bell. Then use the bolt or dowel to press the shaft out. Once the shaft is pressed out, clean and inspect the hole for Loctite. Now we do the process in reverse with our new shaft kit, hardware, Loctite, and measure for the correct uh, shaft height. The only difference is the 7215 motor shaft has alignment holes. You need to make sure the holes line up when pressing the shaft in. To prep the hole before the shaft is pressed in, we put a small amount of Loctite 648 around the lip of the hole. Now we can press the new shafts in, making sure to reference flat spots and reference holes. 
With the flat spot and the reference holes aligned, we check the height of the shaft according to the drawing. The 4012-400 is 5.5 millimeters. I have set my calipers to 5.5 millimeters and check the shaft height. It's correct. Now take your new hardware and apply Loctite 263 and secure the shaft in place. Now that the bearings and shafts have been replaced in our XF series motors, we can attach the motor bell back to the stator. The most important item to address is to not let the motor bell slap back onto the stator. Take your time and be careful. Give the motor a spin and make sure that it spins freely. The last part of the assembly is attaching the collar with its new hardware. The collar's lip should always go towards the bearing. Make sure to align the set screw holes with the flat spots. Use Loctite 263 on all hardware. The 7215 and 5215 both have large button head cap screws that hold the whole system together. Our 4215 and below use two set screws uh, to hold the system in place. For the larger motors, put the collar with the lip towards the bearing. Align the set screws with the flat spots. Screw one of the set screws down until it just touches one of the flat spots. What this does is it holds the collar in place as you lock the button head cap screw in down. Now put the button head cap screw on and lock it in place. At that point, with the button head cap screw locked in place, you can tighten the two set screws down completely. With the smaller XF series motors, simply place the collar on the shaft with the lip towards the bearing. Align the flat spots with the set screws. With your fingers, clamp the whole system together, then tighten the set screws in place. This concludes the rebuild of the KDE Direct XF Series multi-rotor motors. Thank you.